So greetings to all of you on this occasion of the FARA Annual Convention 2020. Uday just has given some very sound advice of the four things to remember, short term versus long term, strengthening the financial foundation, how the dealership model will change and sensitive to change in the industry dynamics. Clearly, uh, many of you know that the dealerships that fail to survive that has invariably happened because in good times, money has been taken out of the dealership business and invested, as Uday said, in real estate, which sometimes then leads to trouble. So Uday, thank you for that sound advice uh, to our dealer fraternity. Uh, and I'm sure the dealers will take it very uh, seriously. Let me start off uh, my speech on a lighter note with Asis as the outgoing president of FADA and Vinkes as the incoming president and Manis as the secretary of FADA it almost feels like I am in a Mahindra dealer meet. I do believe, though, that Asis has provided excellent leadership to FADA in perhaps the most challenging two years ever faced by the industry. What with industry slowdown even pre-COVID-19, BS6 transition, and then the COVID-19 lockdown. The good news is that knowing Wing case, I have no doubt that he will set new benchmark for FADA presidency. I wish him all the best in the tenure at the top and hope that industry will see the best two-year growth during his time. Let me start, take this opportunity to congratulate the dealer fraternity for the way you all have managed the reopening post the COVID lockdown. Clearly, COVID pandemic and the ensuing uh, lockdowns are unprecedented. Events caused lot, causing a lot of human and economic pain. Despite the pain around, the dealer fraternity has risen to the occasion as the economy started to reopen. You all deserved a loud round of applause for the agility and resilience you all have demonstrated in Rio, putting all necessary safety precautions in place, inspiring customer confidence and leading the path to recovery. I would like to say that for the auto industry, the recovery has been a V-shaped recovery in sales volume, especially for passenger vehicles, small commercial vehicles and two wheelers. Honestly, the recovery has been quicker than I had expected and is driven by the positive sentiment in agri and rural economy. Yesterday in the Siam Executive Committee meeting after the annual convention, all CEOs were unanimous in their view that the demand recovery will continue to sustain at least through Diwali. We will probably have a lull period of six weeks post Diwali as we always do. And the real test of sustainability of demand will come from January 1st which the optimist in me says will positively surprise all of us. Pain remains, of course, in the MHCV segment uh, and this likely to continue till the whole economy gets back onto the growth path. And hopefully that too will happen sooner than we expect. We are all aware of the supply constraints that the OEMs are facing today. We have talked quite a bit about it yesterday. Some of you were in the, in the SIAM meeting. We are facing because of local lockdowns and COVID-19 situation at some of the key suppliers. Yesterday, Minister Javadikar had announced that days of local lockdowns are over. So I hope by next month, all the supply woes should be over and you should be able to get all the vehicle supplies that you want. To my mind, today's conference is of great significance. The annual conferences for all three automotive associations, SIAM, ACMA and FADA, have been held digitally. While we look forward always to, to these conferences for a meeting in person, and there's no replacement for personal connect, the digitally enabled mediums do offer great efficiency and versatility, as you have seen. We need to embrace this up openly and swiftly move towards highly connected, efficient, physical world. If there's one good thing that COVID has done, it has shattered many a mental barrier. Many things that are, that are seemingly impossible pre-COVID are possible today. Whether it is work from home, elimination of travel, or operating out of very frugal inventories. This will lead to a new normal, which I believe in many ways will be better than the old normal. So what has changed in terms of dealership operations? One of the points that Uday had talked about, and I'll spend some time on that, as to how I see this new normal and what I see changing. I think the biggest change is, is digitalization of everything. There's huge emphasis on contactless. What it is leading to is the OEMs rapidly developing excellent digital platforms, 
that will make everything in the purchase cycle from first inquiry to vehicle delivery and installation possible for a customer sitting at home. The Mahindra dealers would have experienced the power of own online platform. While contactless may come down after some time, what will not change is the role of digital platforms, which in many ways will replace large part of the current role of the sales consultant. Therefore, the sales consultant will have to move away from the traditional the six point sales story to adding value to a customer's purchase decision. And this will require a reorientation of the role and reskilling, very important, reskilling of the sales consultant. And you can probably sell more for less. Another change I see on the horizon is seamless integration between OEMs and its dealers. Be it the website, lead generation, resolving customer queries or field concerns, sales review, monthly planning, vehicle ordering, one will not know where the OEM ends and the dealer begins. What will this translate to? Most important, significant reduction in inventory levels. levels. Pre-COVID, 30 to 35 days of dealer inventory was considered the norm. Some companies managed with few days less, some with few days more. Today, we are working with about 15 days. Maybe we will settle at about 20 days. You all know what that means in terms of working capital reduction. In fact, I would love to see the day when the vehicle goes into assembly line, the moment a customer order is confirmed and no one keeps any inventory. We'll probably have to wait a few years for us to get there. But right now, let's look at inventory coming down to a level of 18, 20 days. The less showroom visits, the need for physical infrastructure will lessen. Maybe you can manage with two thirds of the showroom space. Back office consolidation is definitely on the cards. I'm sure many of you have taken out your calculators to see what it translates to in terms of profit enhancements. Let me help you. Your, pres your president tells me, that at present, the cost of selling and servicing for a dealer is about 8 to 8.5% 8 of gross revenue. My estimate is that you should have at least 150 basis point and maybe as high as 300 basis point improvement uh, in this in these expenses. This is a combination of lesser manpower, back office consolidation, smaller showrooms, and lower capital employed. There is a good news. The bad news is that your principals may want you to share some of these gains with them or with the customers. So my dealer friends, as Uday said, you are the backbone of the auto industry. You are our connect to the customer. Performance of an OEM is not just based on products and pricing, but equally on the quality of dealer networks they have. I understand that we have 8,500 dealer principals in our country with 15,000 franchises and 26,000 showrooms. You employ 40 lakh people, about 10 times as much as the auto OEMs. So clearly, your contribution to Indian economy also is huge. And I know that you have been, you'd love to get the status of MSMEs, as Asish said in his opening remarks. And it's something that even Siam is pushing for on your behalf. At a personal level, my first interaction with dealers was in 2000 when we launched the Bolero. And given that at that time, a large number, in fact, most of the dealers who are Marwaris, everyone thought that with the last name of Goenka, I too was a Mahindra dealer, could not possibly be the R&D head of an automobile company. I've enjoyed my interaction with all the Mahindra dealers over the years and learned a lot from them. I thank you for the same. But what I'm truly proud of is the distance that Indian dealer fraternity has traveled in these 20 years. Those of you who have been in this business for a long time, just have to look at the photographs of your infrastructure at that time and now. The quality of your sales consultants, the technician training that you provide, the sales and customer care processes that you follow today, and most importantly, the customer centricity that have become part of your DNA. I'm also very happy to see that many of the next generation is coming into the business and that too with MBA degrees, in some cases from US universities. In those days, Indian OEMs used to send their dealer delegations to Europe and USA to learn best practices. Today, I'm sure that if a dealer delegation was to come from one of those countries on a mission to India, they will learn a thing or two from you. And I must say that FADA has played an important role in that transition. You should be proud of what we have achieved. 
and wish you all the success in your endeavors. And thank you for allowing me to be a part of, the, of your journey. Take care of your employees, your customers, and stay safe. God bless you.